Ginny Simone is uh, back from the United Nations. We uh, talked with her yesterday afternoon as things were falling apart. Uh, I mean, you had Iran, and then you had North Korea, and then you had Syria, all back away from this treaty, leaving things uh, in a mess when we last spoke with Ginny. Uh, Ginny has joined us now. Ginny, thank you so much for your time. Sure enough. All right, so what... What actually happened last night after we uh, talked? Because I, I guess they didn't come to any sort of resolution? No, I mean, this thing, it went on and on and on. Last night. They finally got things wrapped up, i say, about 11 o'clock last night. The chairman, he tried, but no success. And as you said, it went down to defeat. But what's really, really interesting is that you had countries like Iran, like Syria, like North Korea, already hit or threatened with U.N. sanctions, and they made clear they had no plans of abiding by this treaty. So, so what does that say? I mean, what's the impact going to be? Uh, there's, you know, they, they say they want to change the uh, availability and the um, legal transfer of firearms. But you know what? If the country wants to do it, they're going to do it. Well, yeah, so now I understand. Is it the, So this goes to the General Assembly next week? Yeah, well, they're looking at next week, and, you know, you're right, it's not over. And the British ambassador said uh, last night that this is in failure, this is success, success deferred, that's what you call it. But she said not for very long. So now it goes to the General Assembly, and I talked with Ted Broman of the Heritage Foundation. i got to tell you, afterwards, I went up to so many people, what did you think about what happened? And it really did catch a lot of people, I'd say most people, off guard. Ted? Here we came into the U.N. seven hours ago. Everybody had a pretty good feeling that there was going to be consensus on this arms trade treaty. And then right out of the box, you have Iran, you have Syria, and you have North Korea saying they all object to the treaty. Your reaction? I was incredibly surprised by this. I don't think anyone out there saw this coming. The idea that these three would speak up at the last minute and block this treaty is completely unexpected to me. I think it was unexpected to virtually everyone who was involved in this. But we should remember it's not just those three. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who officially spoke up. They got the ball rolling. They got the ball rolling. But as you listen to the statements, as, as nations spoke afterwards, it was clear that by my count, there were about 30 nations that objected to the treaty, and five or six more were really, really lukewarm. And that included some really big players. Russia is lukewarm, right. India is lukewarm, Pakistan is lukewarm, China is lukewarm. These are the big players of the non-democratic world. And then you've got the entire dictators league of the Arabs, mm -hmm. Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua. It is, it is really sort of the International League of Supervillains. And, and you heard Russia say they felt this was a manipulation of consensus. I mean, there was one criticism after another once Iran spoke out. There was an effort by Mexico to sort of get this thing through on the sly, speaking up and saying there's no definition of consensus, yeah, no boy. one knows what it means. Uh, in non-diplomatic terms, that's what we call a lie. But there were people, a lot of people in that room responded to that. Oh, the, the non-governmental organization, the left-wing crowd, cheered and clapped when Mexico said that. And that really scares me, mm -hmm. because what it points out is that there are a lot of people out there who don't want consensus negotiations at the U.N., and when that happens, they're going to break outside the U.N. entirely and do their own crazy thing completely apart from any U.S. ability to supervise them. That's really bad news. Well, and speaking of Mexico, and then you had Mexico come up and say, okay, let's adopt the treaty without a vote. Yeah, that's completely against the terms of the conference. No matter what they wanted to do, this is not a question of crime, but if it were a crime, that would be illegal. This is just, it's completely outside the rules. They were just throwing up a Hail Mary, mm -hmm. not a Hail Mary from on the football field. They were throwing up a Hail Mary from outside the football stadium, trying to go, I don't know, maybe 500 yards at one go. It wasn't going to happen. But it really is like deja vu. I mean, yeah. we spent hours in there. There is no treaty now, and so now it's going to go to the General Assembly. Yeah, and there I don't think the news is going to be so rosy. Because depending on how you read the U.N. Charter, the vote in the General Assembly is either a simple majority or two-thirds. There's 195 nations in the U.N., depending on whether you count, you know, Palestine, et cetera, et cetera. And even if all of the skeptical people vote against the treaty, you're going to get a maximum of 40 or 50 votes against the treaty. So 
it is going to be adopted through the General Assembly. What do you think the reaction at the Obama White House is going to be, though, to this news that the treaty did never, it just didn't go anywhere? You know, I think in one way they're going to be pretty pleased about this because the treaty was blocked in the UN and the US wasn't responsible for blocking it. So they look good. Mm -hmm. And then the treaty is going to happen anyhow through the General Assembly, right. so they're going to get their treaty. So I think they're really going to sit back and smile about this and call this a win win. All their left wing friends and the NGOs will, for a few hours, give the U.S. a break and stop blaming us for everything. And the administration will get his treaty anyhow. So I, I think this is probably their best possible outcome. But really, the fight far from over. Oh, no, no. This, this is not a and victory. And you heard the chairman say, we're going to keep going. I oh, mean, yeah. he said, you know, we're going to keep pushing for it. And so you're right. The U.N.'s got a long process of doing this, and they're going to keep the process going, don't yeah. you think? Oh, absolutely. This is not a victory. Anyone who calls this a victory is kidding themselves. This treaty, as the chairman of the conference said, is coming. It's going to come through the General Assembly. This is really a minor tactical delay in the arrival of the treaty. In three months, we're going to have an arms trade treaty. So your message to gun owners? Uh, continue to be watchful, continue to be wary. Uh, I heard things in that conference room during final statements that disturbed me very deeply. You, heard, you had Nicaragua speak up and say that they're in favor yes. of really strenuous, really vigilant gun control and that they've implemented a number of U.N. instruments to help them achieve that, and that they view the arms trade treaty as part of that entire mm -hmm. process. You heard dictatorship after dictatorship say, we want controls on the transfer of arms to non-state actors. Non-state actors means private citizens. Now, they want it partly because they view the ATT as a coup prevention plan. But when you start writing those rules, for dictatorships, you end up writing them, unfortunately, for democracies as well. A bump in the road, but it's going on. Yeah, I wouldn't quite say full speed ahead. Yeah, this I don't is either. a big bump in the road. <laughs> and people ought to know what it was like yeah. sitting in that room today. Oh, I'll tell it, you. It was, it, it, was, is, it was unbelievable. I know. It was worse than watching paint dry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it was interesting and exciting in yeah. a way. But, you know, you got to recognize that making a treaty as uh, the famous German statesman Bismarck said, is like watching sausage being made. And this yeah. was one messy sausage. It was, but we have been through this how many times where everybody thought it was close and then it just falls apart. Well, you know, I hate to say it, but I think third time for them is going to be the charm. Yeah. The General well, Assembly is going to be the charm for them. Well, got to keep fighting. Yep. All righty. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, Jenny Simone uh, talking with uh, Ted Broman of the Heritage Foundation. And so, uh, Jenny, I mean, it sounds like at this point, uh, 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 Ted's take is almost that this is a fait accompli. Yeah, I really don't know. And I talked to a lot of people um, late last night, that, the people that were left, I should say, about what they think uh, is going to happen in the General Assembly. And nobody would really say uh, whether with the, what the odds were, really. I mean, there were a lot of representatives uh, and, and from the U.S. and the NGOs saying that the U.S., somebody at the... White House obviously likes this treaty or that they're going to think it's the best treaty they're going to get, so it's likelihood that the U.S. is going to support this. But, you know, it's a really tough call. I really don't know. Yeah, and, you know, again, I mean, any treaty that would be signed by uh, President Obama would have to be ratified by the uh, U.S. Senate to go into effect. But we've talked about the problems that exist with this treaty, even, even outside of ratification before. Uh, you know, other countries that... Uh, would sign this treaty, become signatories that may uh, want to import firearms into the United States. If the U.S. doesn't ratify this treaty, we may we may find it difficult to get some of our favorite uh, firearms from overseas. Oh, that's a huge problem. I think that's one of the bigger problems um, if this does go through. And, you know, the treaty, while it's going to go to the General Assembly, once it gets to the president, the treaty actually will be sent to the State Department before it actually gets to the president. It's going to go to the State Department lawyers. It's going to the Defense Department lawyers as well as others. They're going to review it. Then they're going to recommend to the president what he should do. And, you know, he signs it. Let's say the odds are pretty good that he's going to. Then it goes to the Center for Eradication, as you were saying. Um, so, But even though the treaty was defeated, um, the push is there. You could see people were not laying back. They were determined to get this thing through. They were mad about what Iran and Syria had done, but they were not calling it quits. No means. No way. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, Jenny, myself included, uh, are a little confused about if this failed yesterday, how, how then does it even move on to the General Assembly? I mean, is, is uh, clearly That's this is not like Congress, works. right? I mean, this isn't—so bills don't ever 
die. They can just bring forward whatever they want, even if there's no consensus. Well, and it was like with Mexico. Mexico said, well, let's approve the treaty without a vote. But it's just the way it works. The, you know, you had a lot of countries in there supporting it, so it goes to the General Assembly, and they will decide. They'll look at the treaty, they'll look at this, and they're looking at the final draft, the draft that they were working on yesterday, and they'll decide what they want to do. All right. Well, listen, Jenny, I appreciate you joining us on the program and helping us yep. make sense of everything. I guess we'll be paying more attention to it next week. Yep. And I know you're going to be talking to Charles Butler, and I was just in Chicago. I reported that coming up. I was talking, actually, I interviewed some gang members out there, and I know Charles will, will address this because he's a real fighter out there. But you know, you got these gang members, and they tell you time and time again they don't fear the police, they don't fear the system. But you know what they did say? Tougher sentencing. That might make them think twice. All right, looking forward to seeing that report, Jenny. Thanks again, and happy Easter to you. Good holiday weekend to everybody, sure enough. Thank you. It's uh, Jenny Simone on NRA News.